हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम अगेन स्टूडेंट्स इन वन ऑफ माय प्रीवियस वीडियो लेक्चर्स आई हैव डिस्कस्ड न्यू क्रिटिसिज्म आई आल्सो डिस्कस्ड स्ट्रक्चरलिज्म एंड पोस्ट स्ट्रक्चरलिज्म सो सम ऑफ द व्यूअर्स रिक्वेस्टेड मी टू अपलोड अनदर वीडियो ऑन रीडर रिस्पॉन्स थ्योरी सो इन टूडेज वीडियो लेक्चर वी वॉन्ट टू डिस्कस how this reader response theory came into existence we will also discuss the important features of this literary theory and at the end we will also visit some of the important followers and critics of this theory so now let's begin see if you want to understand this reader response theory go back during the 19th century what kind of literary criticism was discussed in england during the 19th century then you realize when you read the whole history of literary criticism and particularly if you come to the 19th century you come across some critics like saint bew and tain who gave much importance to the study of the author's life and personality the author's social background cultural and political background of the author so the author was at the center in 19th century traditional criticism but then if you come to the first half of the 20th century you have a change in literary theory in literary criticism during the first half of the 20th century we have some important critics like t s eliot j c ransom i a richards allen tate and so many others who gave more focus more importance to the formal structure of the text so here the focus the attention is on the text on poetry drama novel short story okay during the 19th century the focus was on the author but now the focus is shifted on the text so this first half of the 20th century new criticism they gave much importance to structures and that's why the theory of structuralism came into existence now let's move ahead if you come to the second half of the 20th century what do you see here again the shift there is a shift in the the theory instead you know 19th century the focus was on the author first half of the 20th century the focus was on the text which is known as formalistic or structuralist criticism but 20th century again now the focus is not on the text neither on the author but on the reader okay so the what is the cultural background of the reader what is the social and political background of the reader in which context a particular text is placed before the reader that makes the importance here during the 20th second half of the 20th century and that new change is known as reader response theory some of the important reader response theory critics were stanley fish and rolla bats okay so now let's exactly begin to discuss what this theory is uh, i hope you understand 19th century the focus is the author first half of the 20th century the text and second half of the 20th century the reader okay so the reader response theory came into existence in england in english literature in the mid 20th century so 1940s and 50s onwards you come across this okay now this theory was actually a reaction against the previous theory of new criticism previous theory of structuralism and formalism russian formalism 
okay now the formalist and the structuralist i told you they gave much importance on the study of the text okay and the underlying structures of the text and they believed that meaning comes from the text but you know these critics of reader response theory they reacted against them and they developed a new new idea they discarded this idea previous idea and they de they developed a new idea and they believed that the meaning comes not, neither from the author nor from the text but from the reader's mind and personality okay so the reader is here the center okay so that's why it's called reader response theory so reader response theory in short you can say gives much importance on how the reader plays an important role in interpreting the text and in bringing about the meaning from the text okay and they also believed that meaning is not fixed okay uh, in structuralism in previous times first half of the 20th century it was believed that one text one meaning fixed one meaning is fixed with one text but in post structuralism 20th second half of the 20th century 1950s onwards a new idea was developed that meaning is not fixed it depends upon the reader's subjective response how a reader reacts and reads a particular text meaning depends on that so you know this theory uh, believes that different readers may interpret the same text in different manners okay say for example when i say an apple okay then you must have thought about a red apple some other a listener might think about a green apple right so it all depends upon how you receive it all depends upon the receiver receiver is the reader reader makes uh, he reader decides he plays an important role in finalizing the meaning of the text so that is reader response theory now the another question is you know who are the foundations uh, who laid the foundations of uh, this new theory reader response theory remember these three names lewis rosenblatt okay wolfgang eiser and hans robert jaws these are the three foundations of uh, reader response theory lewis rosenblatt okay he published this book literature as exploration in 1938 and he argued that reading is an active process in which the reader engages with the text okay the reader is active the text is inactive okay and the reader brings his own experiences and perspectives to bear on its interpretation okay so when i read a particular text my own perspectives and my own experiences of my own life they help me understand this particular text okay and that's why your experiences with life are different so your meaning might be different from what i understand from one per work of art so this idea was developed by lewis rosenblatt second important uh, uh, theorist was wolfgang eiser okay he wrote this book the implied reader and published in 1972 now this man eiser is a great scholar and a follower of reader response theory and he argues that readers construct mental images of the characters settings and the events in the text now this mental pictures that we create may be different from others how i understand othello when i read the tragedy othello 
I have one picture of Othello in my mind. When you read the same text, you have another picture. So the readers uh, themselves, they create, they construct their mental images of the characters, of the events uh, which are narrated or presented in the text. Okay, and that finalizes the ultimate meaning of the text. So that is the second foundation of founding uh, leader of reader response theory. Third founding leader of this theory is Hans Robert Joss. Okay, now he now Joss gave more importance to the historical and cultural context. Okay, so you know in one culture one thing is good, but uh, in another culture, the same thing may not be good. Say, for example, uh, when you come at my place, my home, I might offer you a cup of tea because it is my culture, right? But uh, at some other part of the world, if you go to some African countries and if you offer one cup of tea there to the guest, they might not welcome this gesture. Okay, so what is good in one culture may not always be good in another culture. So culture also uh, constructs our personality and our thinking style. So reader be who belongs to one culture has one meaning and the reader who belongs to another culture has another meaning. Why? Because his thinking style is different and the reader uh, who lived historical perspective is, is also important. Okay, The reader who lived during the 19th century and he reads one text and the reader who lives during the 21st century, he reads the same text, both have different meanings, right? Why? So history also matters a lot, time also matters a lot, culture, time, society, all these things are discussed by Joe's in his uh, book. Okay. So all in all, you remember these are the three founding stones of reader response theory. Now what are the important features of this theory? As I told you, the first one is subjectivity. Subjectivity means personal attention, right? It all, it, it's all about personal thing. When I read, uh, it is my own personal reading, okay? So this theory gives more importance to the subjective uh, interpretation, okay? Your interpretation is personal and my interpretation is personal and uh, we both have different personalities, different thinking styles. That's why our readings are different. So it, subjectivity is one of the features of reader response theory. Second is active role of the reader. Here the reader is the subject, the text is the object, okay. Uh, in the previous times, what was the thing, you know, first after the 20th century, the text was the subject and the reader was the object, okay. But now the focus, the table is turned, okay. The focus is shifted, here the reader becomes the most important element in drawing out the meaning from the text. Contextualization is also important in reader response theory. Why? Because you know in which context you uh, read the text that is also important. Which historical and which cult cultural background uh, in which uh, it is presented the text that matters a lot. Okay, so contextualization is also another important features of reader response theory. Uh, number four, diversity of interpretation. Uh, because as I told you, because there are as many meanings as there are readers. Okay, uh, it all depends upon the number of readers, right? Uh, because every reader belongs to some different place and different culture, different time and that's why we have diversity, multiplicity of meaning is found in reader response theory. Uh, number five, we have reaction against traditional literary criticism. 
reader response theory is as i told you in the beginning it is a reaction against the traditional forms of literary criticism in traditional times during the 19th century the author was more important okay the people the critics the scholars they wanted to study the life of the author the biography of the author the mind and personality of the author but that is not true that is not proper according to these critics who followed reader response theory so reader response theory uh, there are five important features of this okay now who the another question is who are the major followers or critics of reader response theory then remember these names stanley fish rolla bats norman holland david blage jane tompkin jonathan killer okay these are some important uh, critics uh, i have taken at least two three critics here to discuss uh, before you number one we have rolla bats remember this name i have uh, uploaded another separate video on rolla bats the death of the author actually rolla bats published one essay the title of that critical essay was death of the author and he said that author has no role to play as far as the meaning is concerned no need to study the author's biography and the author's intentions okay they are irrelevant when we are reading the text most important person is the reader not the author uh, stanley fish is another important uh, critic of reader response theory he published this book in is there a text in this class this is the title of the book okay and here he argues that uh, literary interpretation or criticism is not a matter of discovering the meaning of the text but it rather it is a matter of creating meaning through the act of interpretation right so here there is a, a slight change in the basic definition of literary criticism fish believed that criticism is not the act of interpretation he believed that criticism is the act of creating meaning while we are in the process of this uh, act of interpretation another important uh, book written by stanley fish is surprised by seeing the reader in paradise lost here stanley fish has analyzed different ways that the readers have interpreted john milton's epic poem paradise lost uh, from uh, 17th century onwards okay when paradise lost was published and read during the 17th century it had one interpretation during 18th century it had another interpretation 19th century yet another interpretation 20th century yet a new uh, interpretation new meanings come out from uh, this text so one text through the history has uh, different meanings because the readers might have different religious and cultural backgrounds okay so uh, number 3 an important critic of reader response theory is david blage a uh, david blage has written this book readings and feelings an introduction to subjective criticism okay here he presents the idea that readers bring their own feelings and beliefs okay and they experience uh, the text in their own manners and these different factors shape the interpretation of the text okay so he believed that subjective responses are an important part of the reading experience and that that should be taken very seriously by the literary scholars all in all this theory became popular after 1950s okay and these are the three major critics who, whom i have taken blage stanley fish and uh, rolla bats okay but there are some problems with this theory two problems i i will mention at the end before i uh, finish this video these two problems are that you know number one some critics argue that reader response theory gives much emphasis on the readers subjective experience and we generally in this theory we neglect the role of the author and the role of the text which is again not good
okay so completely this theory was not uh, welcomed by the critics another problem with this theory is that you know this theory can adequately account for the influence of broader social and historical factors on the interpretation of the text okay sometimes these broader uh, perspectives historical cultural social might lead to some uh, unintended meaning of the text so these are the two important uh, uh, limitations of this theory i hope now the idea is clear to you i hope you are clear about what this re reader response theory is still if you have some doubts or questions do write to me in the comment section of this channel and uh, students please do share this video among all your friends and classmates so that others also can be benefited thank you for watching thank you